most of the well-known scholars, Sheikh Nasruddin Albani, Sheikh Bin Baz, Sheikh Utaimi, all were three great scholars, may Allah have mercy on them, Rahimullah, that they have given the fatwa that suicide bombing per se is haram. It is haram. But there are other scholars like Sheikh Safar al-Hawali, like Sheikh Salman Auda, they have different views. But you should realize that the term suicide bombing per se, committing suicide in Islam is haram. There is no two doubt about it. But as far as suicide bombing is concerned, the scholars differ. What they say that the word suicide is a misnomer. It's a misnomer. In suicide, a person is fed up of his life and he wants to end his life. In this, they say it is a strategy of war. The main intention is to cause loss to the enemy and while doing that, there are high chances that they will die. So therefore, it's a strategy of war, which scholars like Salman Auda say it is right. But it does not mean that any Muslim wakes up in the morning and ties a bomb and goes. Most of the scholars, including Salman Auda, Safal Hawa, they say it's haram. Anyway, suicide bombing, as I mentioned in my talk, it is alien to Islam. It's alien to Islam. But there are some Muslims in Palestine or Iraq have done that. But they say if it is used as a strategy, as a last resort, when many of the Muslims are being killed and they want to see to it that instead when they die alone, they will kill some other people and the main intention is to cause loss. As a strategy, some of the scholars say that it can be used. And as I mentioned in my talk, that in Iraq, suicide bombing wasn't there until USA came to Iraq. And according to Robert Pape, who is an expert on suicide bombing, he said most of the suicide bombing are done as a social cause, as a political cause against the military power, to remove the military power from that country. So this is what is said by Robert Pape in his book, Dying to Win. But even if you do, you should see to it that these scholars who also give permission, they say that it should be under guidance of a scholar, under the guidance of a person based on Islamic Sharia, Normally, you should not kill innocent human being. You can't kill innocent human being. It's haram in Islam according to Surah Mahayadha, chapter 5 of Sahih 2. Taking all this into consideration, in some cases, some scholars give permission, it can be done. Hope that answers the question. Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Uh, my name is Muhammad Firas, sir. Uh, I have a question for you. Uh, it's a non-Muslim question. Actually, uh, he is Sastik. He won't believe any religion. So, he asked me the question, uh, who created the God? God created us and who created God? So how should I answer him? I could ask the question that a non-Muslim atheist asked him the question, who created God? The answer is that it is like my friend whose name is John. His brother Jack was admitted to the hospital, he tells me. Brother John tells me that my brother Jack was admitted to the hospital. He gave birth to a child. Was the child a girl or a boy? Girl or a boy? Can you guess? Maybe, I don't know. You don't know. Girl or a boy? How can a man give birth to a child? Jack is a brother of brother John. Admitted to the hospital. Give birth to a child, girl or a boy? The question is illogical. A man cannot give birth to a child. Similarly, the definition of true God, Allah, is, is uncreated. So the question, who created God, is illogical. The moment I say so and so person created God, he is not God. There is nothing like him. So the definition of God is, he is uncreated. So the question, who created God, is illogical. The moment I say who created God, that thing cannot be God. God by definition is uncreated. He creates everything else like us. We are dependent on him. He is independent on anything. How to convince an atheist is, you can refer to my video cassette, is the Quran God's word, which gives this answer as well as how to convince an atheist about Islam, is the Quran God's word, will deal in detail how to convince an atheist. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The next question on the slip. Did the media play any role against Muslims relating to September 11? 
The question posed is, did the media play any role against the Muslim regarding September 11? It is no hidden secret. The media says that there were about 13 or odd Arabs who went in a plane and crashed on the World Trade Center. How they came to know? In the crash, they found a passport. Imagine, 2000 degrees centigrade. So the next joke was that next time, the clothing of the American soldiers in the military should be made of that passport. Everything burned, but the passport survives. <laughs> then the news tells us that this Muslim Arab, he had gone to an alcoholic bar one day before boarding the plane. Imagine a human being wants to give up his life. He knows he's going to die and he goes to an alcoholic bar being a Muslim. I mean, where do they get the information from? It is nothing but to malign. And who did it? Osama bin Laden did it. Imagine CIA, which has a budget of billions of dollars a year. FBI, billions of dollars a year. Even a bird cannot fly on the Pentagon without being noticed, and a plane comes and crashes in the Pentagon. Later on, there are various theories. I am saying theories because we don't know the fact. How did it happen? When they analyze the whole Marine Pentagon, they say it cannot be made by an airplane. So all these are just to malign the Muslims. So the media is utilizing this. It's a big, as some of the theories say, it was an inside job. The way the World Trade Center collapsed, it can't be a plane hitting. It was an inside job. Allah alam. But whatever happened, however much they try to attack Islam, Makarum makarallah, wallahu khairul makarin. They planned and plotted Allah to plan. Allah is the best to plan. And Alhamdulillah, in spite of this, the media attacking Islam, yet today, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, including America and Europe. Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Khan, and I would like to ask you that, is it allowed in our religion for women to use media for the propagation of Islam? Because some of our scholars don't allow us to record audio cassettes and bring back home so that maybe make our husbands listen and all that. And is it allowed or not? And uh, how can we convince them? Thank you. The sister has asked the question that can Muslims, Muslim women, take part in media to convey the message or to fight against the evil, etc.? And according to us, some scholars have been fatwa haram. The sister, certain things surely is halal. You can write articles which no scholar will say it's haram. You can write articles, whether in the newspapers, whether on the internet. Surely certain things you can surely take part, as far as the print media is concerned. As far as the audio media is concerned, the difference of opinion. Some scholars say yes, some scholars say no. But normally the voice doesn't come in the aura of the woman. But natural, but normally to be effective, you have to modulate your voice. So if you take care that you unnecessarily don't modulate and don't higgle and don't haggle and don't do too much of laughing, etc., most of the scholars say it can be permitted. As far as coming on the television, again, difference of opinion is there, that most of the scholars, they say that women cannot come on the television. There are many scholars who say that if she's in proper hijab, She's covering herself completely and only showing her face and hand up to the wrist. As long as she's not too much complacent in her voice and following the other rules of Sharia, she can be permitted. But the majority of the scholars say no. She can't be allowed to come in front of the television because the Quran says in Surah Noor, chapter number 24, verse number 30, say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. So based on these verses and other hadith, the scholars are divided. But recently, last year, the top Salaf scholars, Salafi scholars, like Sheikh Nasr al-Awad, I was in Saudi Arabia and I was shocked, that he also gave permission that a woman, if she's properly dressed, even though she's not in Naqab, because Naqab is not a farad in Islam. Though some scholars say yes, but according to Sheikh Nasr al-Albani, etc., Naqab covering the face is not farad in Islam. But today many scholars, not majority, yet there are few. In numbers there are many, but in percentage there are few. Good scholars have given the fatwa, like Sheikh Nasr al-Awad in Saudi Arabia, that because of the media we should permit women to come in the television. But 